Initially, I read for Victoria Winters, the role of, of the governess. And I thought, I am so wrong for this role. Why <laughs> I submitted for it? You know, my agent comes through again. Um, but they did call me back. And I read a second time. And then I went off to Florida to do a, um, a play with June Allison, of all people. And I came back and I said, whatever happened to a very, very strange soap opera thing? I said, I think there's another role in there for which I would be better suited. Um, she's, you know, rich, spoiled, brat. Look no further. <laughs> but uh, so I did read for Carolyn. And she just, Carolyn seemed like a lot of fun. It was clear from the script I read that the concept was Jane Eyre-like. That is, it was the governess on her way to an isolated place to which she knew nothing about to take care of a child whom she had never met. I never watched soap operas, so I didn't think it was all that peculiar, truthfully. It seemed interesting, and, and um, the characters, from what I could gather, at that time we were limited to five per script. This is five characters per script. And the thing I found most exciting about it at that time was the fact that Joan Bennett was doing it, because Joan Bennett was a huge movie star. I mean, gorgeous, and just drop-dead gorgeous. And I found it fascinating that she would choose to come from film to do anything for daytime television. If you were in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, in a leaky rowboat, with one oar, the person you would want with you is Dan Curtis. You might survive. <laughs> when he makes up his mind to do something, he gets it done. He's very willful. He's very focused. He's very difficult. You probably want to cut that, but he's a difficult man. I adore him. Carolyn Collins Stoddard. It took me a long time to justify her not being off at college, which is where she should have been. <laughs> but then she would have been a whole other person. Uh, she lived at home. She was probably 17, 18, somewhere, uh, certainly under 20, and still living at home with mom and Uncle Roger and getting her way about pretty much whatever she wanted. Um, I, I talk, I actually sing a song about Carolyn, and I've taken, I've tried to choose songs based on my different characters, and the one I chose for Carolyn was Girls Just Want to Have Fun, the Cindy Lauper song, because she, she wants something to happen, anything, you know, it's just, so she's dancing at the, the local dive, you know, called the Blue Whale. Um, and at that time, I had extremely long, extremely blonde hair, which tend to flip about quite nicely. She was a very 60s character. She was probably the most quintessentially 60s character on the show um, because she, she knew there was more going on than she was getting in her life <laughs> out there. My character was so rooted in that, in that exact period of time, the only thing peculiar about her really was her isolated existence. Um, but aside from that, she, she uh, was, you know, right from 1967. Was it confusing being different characters? Well, it was a little repertory company, you know, I mean, we had our own little thing going on there. And for the most part, we were completely different characters. Or we were ancestors we were our own ancestors. Or at one point, I remember I was thrust into the future. And so I was, I mean, crazy as a bed bug. I was Carolyn, you know, very wealthy, Miss Stoddard. I obviously had never married. And I was just really Looney Tunes. But that's the only instance in which I remember still being myself, but at a different time. By the time the show ended, I had been eight different people and 
they were all really fun. I was, I was a Cockney. I was a Cockney dance hall girl. I was um, um, an insane person. Usually, I was somewhat insane. Most of my characters were a little, a little bit on the edge. I'm not sure what that says about me, but it was really fun. <laughs>